Chapter 5 The Lone Wolf The wolf awoke with a start, wondering what had awakened him, and cursing himself for falling asleep. His dreams had been troubled, but he soon forgot them. He glanced nervously around, and noticed he had been sleeping beside an old lighthouse. The paint was long gone, and it was cracked in many places. It was strange that it still stood. The summer of storms had completely realigned the coastlines. He looked south and saw that the beach was strewn with rubble and concrete, and above the tide line were miles and miles of low shrubs. A rat scurried across the small clearing between the lighthouse and the shrubs. It paused for a moment, sniffing the air. Without a second thought, the man pulled out a small caliber weapon and shot it in the head. Picking it up by the tail, he stuffed it into his pack, thinking of how it would taste with the wild onions he had scrounged the day before. Looking north to the horizon, he saw the city. It looked almost like a normal city from the distance, but he knew it to be the breeding ground for the vile things. He had killed men there for various reasons, one for trying to steal his boots. He usually avoided the cities, but he had needed some supplies, and it was the only place to get them. Two days before, he had looked south, and there it was on the horizon. It had looked majestic reaching up into the sky. Hours before getting there, he began to see the signs of disaster and suffering. Abandoned cars lay strewn about, some now rusting and decaying from their salt water bath, some with the skeletons still holding the steering wheels, the rubble of storm surge scattered on both sides of the road. In one car there was just a child's skeleton laying on the back seat. A tattered blue shirt hung on the decayed remains. In another, there was paper money strewn over the inside of the car and for ten feet around it. He picked one bundle up and saw they were hundred-dollar bills. They were now practically worthless, except as campfire fuel. It was a place of evil and even the rats avoided it, since the bodies, after the years, had been picked clean of flesh. He hurried to be closer to the city, not because he wanted to go there, but because he had to. He had potable water to barter, about a gallon, and he needed ammo. As he got closer, he began to see the piles of bodies from the plagues. They had been carted there on trucks, pushed into mound after mound of what was now just bones and tattered clothes. They had also been picked clean by the rats. He was sure they were no longer contagious, but he steered far to the right of the road to avoid them. The leering skeleton faces were frozen in the grimace of death. When he was halfway around the piles of bones, Something moved in the closest pile, and he jumped. But then all was quiet. He hurried to be away from them, and didn't look back. He had seen the piles of skeletons before, but most times they were only close to the cities, and that was one of the reasons he always tried to stay away from them. In the countryside, people had almost always managed to bury their dead, but still there were the signs of the last days were evident, just not as urgent on the senses. As he got closer to the city, there were even viler things. A half a mile out of the city, he began to see the heads. There were rows and lines of posts six feet tall, and on most a head had been impaled. The most horrible thing that some of them looked fresh. Most of the older heads had decayed, and in all the eyes had been plucked out by birds. The oldest heads 
were just leering, bleached skulls with blank, evil grins. One of the older heads was a girl with long, flowing blonde hair, and even though the head was decayed like the others, the eyes were mysteriously intact. The vacant stare pierced through him, and he shivered. It was an even more gruesome sight than the empty skulls. In all, he guessed there must be thousands of them, row after row, and line after line, like a military graveyard. He hurried to be past them. Just before he got to the built-up area, he began to walk through a district of fast food places, car and boat dealerships, gas stations, and a few old houses that had been there first. All were now silent. Then the road began to slope down. Halfway down the hill, the road was covered with sand, and the further down he went, the deeper the sand became. He walked into a grocery store full of sand to see what he could find, but the shells above the sand line were picked clean. Everything was gone, not even a bent can or can of cat food or dog food remained. Ironically, all he saw was rat poison, bug spray, and household chemicals. Rats were food, and so were bugs, so poison was no longer necessary. Looking to the bottom of the hill, he guessed that the first floor of all the buildings were filled with sand, and the second floors had become the main floors. The gun shops would be downtown. As he got closer, he began to see evidence of human occupation. Smoke rose here and there from a window or a street. Some dog jerky lay drying on the rack, and a scarecrow made with human skull was posted nearby to keep the birds away. Doll's head lay in the sand, grotesque in its own way. All was strangely silent and he could feel dozens of eyes on him, but he saw nobody. There was a sign that read, Dog Jerky for Sale. Right below it was another sign, which read, Also Wives for Sale. A scarecrow made with a human skull and some tattered clothes had been placed close to the signs. Several birds sat on a nearby clothesline, just looking at it, trying to determine if the scarecrow was dangerous or not. Other than that, there was nobody, not even a single movement, but the feeling of eyes watching him from more than one direction. He guessed that the city had housed several million people in its glory days, and now he had no idea. Maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand remained. Thinking about the heads on the post, he shivered again and thought, maybe just a hundred. Just before entering the first street, he checked his weapons to make sure they all had full clips and strode towards the center of the city. Something brought him out of his daydream. A sound, a feeling, a thought an undeterminate feeling. Something had touched him, and he didn't know what. Then he was back at the lighthouse, looking south again. He was conscious of the sea to his left. Crashing waves seemed to beckon and whisper to him. He half remembered a verse he had once read, but shuddered and quickly passed it out of his mind. Looking at the overcast sky, he knew he could expect rain. In fact, he was sure a storm was coming. The sun hung low in the west. He should have waited for the rain to come and go, but he felt a compulsion to move south. As he felt the first drops of rain on his face, he strode away, moving down the beach. He had the distinct feeling and he was being followed. The full force of the storm came on him suddenly, and he completely forgot his thoughts. 
looking for a dry place to shelter. <laughs>